Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, take your Bible. We do that here at Glory Bound, so just repeat this with me. It's up on the screen. Repeat this with me, if you would, please. This is God's Word that I hold in my hand. Upon God's Word, I take my stand. I can have what it says I can have. I can do what it says I can do. I am what it says I am, and I will do what it tells me to do. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. If you meant that, give Jesus a praise clap offering. Praise the Lord. Amen, amen. Well, a merry heart doeth good like unto a medicine. Listen to this. A woman goes to the doctor, worried about her husband's temper. The doctor asks, what's the problem? The woman says, doctor, I don't know what to do. Every day my husband seems to lose his temper for no reason. It scares me. The doctor says, I have a cure for that. When it seems that your husband is getting angry, just take a glass of water and start swishing it in your mouth. Just swish, swish, but don't swallow it until he either leaves the room or calms down. Two weeks later, the woman comes back to the doctor looking fresh and reborn. The woman says, Doctor, that was a brilliant idea. Every time my husband starts losing it, I swished with water. I swished and swished, and he calmed right down. How does a glass of water do that? The doctor says, The water itself does nothing. It's keeping your mouth shut that does the trick. Ooh. <laughs> Now, before I get in, <laughs> before I get into my message this morning, I do want to say a couple of happy birthdays, Sister Pat Roberts, right back here. Her birthday was yesterday. Sister Kathy Alexander is having her birthday today. Amen. Give them a praise the Lord clap offering for a happy birthday. Amen. Good to have you in church and. Uh, Brother Donnie Whaley said he was really going to get old Mary here in a little bit. He said he's going to text her and say the good son was at church to celebrate. <laughs> Wade is in the house of the Lord, and we're glad to have Wade here with us this morning. Once again, welcome to everyone here this morning, and especially to all of our guests. Man, man, what a great congregation this morning. Uh, we're going to be talking about something that I think that everyone should be uh, happy to hear about this morning. Things the Lord loves. How many of you know there are certain things that the Lord loves? Say amen. And I'd like for you to turn in your Bibles. We're going to read a, a passage of Scripture found in 2 Kings. I have three uh, things that I'd like to share with you this morning from this context of Scripture. There's, there's a lot to be shared here this morning. But let's look at 2 Kings, and, and we're going to be in chapter 6 this morning is where I'm going to begin reading from. We're going to begin reading in verse number 8, So, and there's, there's quite a bit of reading here, so bear with me if you would, please. 2 Kings chapter 6 and verse number 8. Then the king of Syria warred against Israel and took counsel with his servants, saying, In such and such a place shall be my camp. And the man of God sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not such a place, for thither the Syrians are come down. And the king of Israel sent to the place which the man of God told him and warned him of, and saved himself there not once nor twice. Therefore the heart of the king of Syria was sore troubled for this thing. And he called his servants and said unto them, Will ye not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? And one of his servants said, None, my lord, O king, but Elisha the prophet is in Israel. Telleth the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. And he said, Go and spy where he is, that I may send and fetch him. And it was told him, saying, Behold, he is in Dothan. Uh, therefore sent he thither horses and chariots and a great host, and they came by night and compassed the city round, uh, city about. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, an host compassed the city both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? And he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. And when they came down to him, Elisha prayed unto the Lord and said, Smite this people, I pray thee, with blindness. And he smote them with blindness according to the word of Elisha. And Elisha said unto them, this is not the way, neither is this the city. Follow me, and I will bring you to the man whom you seek. 
but he led them to Samaria. And it came to pass when they were coming to Samaria that Elisha said, Lord, open the eyes of these men that they may see. And the Lord opened their eyes, and they saw, and behold, they were in the midst of Samaria. And the king of Israel said unto Elijah, when he saw them, My father, shall I smite them? Shall I smite them? And he answered, Thou shalt not smite them. Wouldest thou smite those whom thou hast taken captive with thy sword and with thy bow? Set bread and water before them, that they may eat and drink and go to their master. And he prepared great provision for them. And when they had eaten and drunk, he sent them away, and they went to their master. So the bands of Syria came no more into the land of Israel. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we're so grateful this morning for the precious word of God that we call the Holy Bible. Father, we're thankful this morning for the Holy Spirit who has the power to quicken this written word and causing it to come alive to every man, woman, and child. Father, I thank you for the biblical truths that are found here this morning that are still relevant for our day today. So, Lord, I pray now for you to have your way in this service. I pray, Father, that you would just help me with a mighty outpouring of your Holy Spirit. And, Lord, that you would anoint me and anoint this congregation in such a way that the spiritual truths will bring the, the, the inspiration and the, and the insight that we need this morning. Thank you, Father, for everyone that's here this morning. We pray a special prayer for those that couldn't be with us here today. Wherever they're at, Lord, we ask that you just be with them and, and look after them and help them as we know only you can. Lord, I do pray now that your will would be done in each and every one of our lives. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Would you put your hand over your heart? Everybody can say this prayer if you would, please. Let's say this prayer to our Heavenly Father. Father in heaven, speak to my heart and change my life in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much for saying that prayer with me this morning. As I look out into this congregation this morning, I believe that there's an opportunity for God to really uh, give us some insight here this morning uh, based on this context of Scripture and others that I'll be showing you as we go along into the service that can really be beneficial to each and every one of us. And I want to draw your attention, if you will, back to verse number 9 and 10, first of all. And we, we notice here that the Syrian army has arrived and, 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 and they're, they're wanting to, uh, they're wanting to take over Israel, if you will. But the man of God, here in verse number nine, and the man of God sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not such a place, for thither the Syrians are come down. And the king of Israel sent to the place which the man of God told him and warned him of and saved himself there not once nor twice. We find here something that I believe is key and vital for us to get a hold of here today is whenever I think about something that the Lord loves, this is something that I found very interesting here because you'll find throughout uh, God's people's uh, travels upon this earth, God would come and give what I believe is divine instruction. And that's my first point. The Lord uh, loves to give divine instructions. I think whenever, whenever the, 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 the Syrians showed up here and, and they were wanting to take over Israel and, and, and conquer them, I think that the man of God stepped up to the plate, if you will, and, and he began to give uh, the message of God uh, to, to the king of Israel and, and warned him and told him, he said, you don't go here. And you don't, in that way, the, the Syrians won't get you. And sure enough, the king of Israel, he sent down some spies and found out that's exactly where the Syrians was. And, and he saved himself not once nor twice. So anyway, we know that there were multiple occasions that the word of God was brought forth by the prophet. Now, I, I want you to realize something here this morning. We're all in this uh, life that we're living right now. And there's times that the enemy comes. And, and he wants to try to invade and take over and attack. And I think it's important for us to realize, that, uh, looking into the Word of God this morning, that God wants to give us divine instructions whenever we're faced with an approach of an enemy. Now here was a natural enemy that was approaching uh, God's people. And God gave divine instructions through the prophet Elisha. And I think it's important for us to see that uh, God wants to give us divine instructions today. How many of you know we have an adversary called the devil or Satan? And we do. And, 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 and I think it's important for us to come to terms with the importance of uh, getting, getting instructions uh, from God. In, in fact, in the book of Psalms, I'd like for you to look at this, if you will. Psalm chapter 32. Hold your spot here. I'll bring you right back here. But I want you to see this because I think this is something that we all need to be very much aware of. Listen to 
to what God is saying today through the writings of the psalmist David here. In Psalm chapter 32 and verse 8, the Lord says, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go, and I will guide thee with mine eye. There are some of you here in the house of God this morning that really need to, to become aware that God wants to give divine instructions to you concerning uh, maybe a situation in life. It could be an attack from the enemy. It could be uh, any number of things. But I, th- I believe it's important for us to get divine instructions from God. And, and I think that if we're going to get divine instruction from God, we need to be willing to get into the Word of God. Somebody say amen. amen. It's important that we get guidance from God. That's what, that's what saved the king of, of Israel in his day, is the, the man of God was giving out divine instructions. I, and and, and I'm, I'm going to say this, and, and I, only, I only do this because I want to honor the office and the, and, and the position that God has given me as a pastor. I believe it's important for men of God today uh, that, that hold the office of a pastor. I believe it's important for us to be students of God's Word so that we can sit down and we can give biblical advice and counsel to those that, that are uh, faced with some kind of situation in life. And, and I'll, I'll be referencing this throughout this message this morning because this is what the Lord really spoke into my heart. That, that as a pastor, as a man of God, just like in a, the prophet Elisha's day, God had placed a position and authority upon Elisha the prophet to be able to be in tune with God and with God's will and word that he was able to save the king of Israel. And I think it's important for God's people to, to get some kind of appreciation and understanding for the men of God today. That we recognize that, that there's, there are times in your life that I need you to have the sense of, of, of ease or being comfortable, if you will, to come and, and talk with me and, and say, Brother David, this is what I'm faced with. And, and I, I want you to know I'll do my very best. And I spend a great deal of my time visiting with different parties about different issues that are going on in their life. And the one thing that I constantly am trying to do, I am constantly trying to direct that person with the Word of God. You see, I think it's important that you, you, you have that, that sense of I can go to the man of God. And he will direct me with God's word in, in the situation I'm faced with. And so I just want to encourage you this morning, to, for those of you this morning that, that may be going through some tough times in your life, I want you to get that sense of appreciation and, and, and that sense of, of, of hope that I can go to the pastor and I can sit and talk with him and, and visit with him and, and I know that he's going to be trying to help me with the Word of God. Because just as I find here that Elijah was able to give the king of Israel a, a divine instructions, I get, I get my divine instructions from God's Word. I'm not just reaching out here into outer space and trying to come up with a personal preference of my own to direct your life. I will always try to base anything that I share with someone upon the Word of God. I'm trying to direct this person with the Word of God. And I think that's important. Listen to this. I want you to see this as well, if you will. Look in the book, book of Proverbs. I want you to turn there the book of Proverbs while we're right there close by. Proverbs chapter 3. I want you to listen to this. This is found in Proverbs 3 and verse 5 and 6. It says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. You see, I'm trying to get you to get to a place to where that, just like in Elisha's day, God had sovereign authority over His people Israel. Somebody say amen. And He wanted to keep them safe. He wanted to provide protection for them. There's something to be said about you and I coming to a place that we trust the Lord with all of our heart. You see, it's about... There's some of you here this morning that may be really in a difficult decision time in your life. And, and I think it's incumbent upon us as God's people that we acknowledge, just like in Israel's day, we needed to hear the divine instructions. And God is trying to say, I'll give you divine instructions, because, and it, but it's going to require faith. You've got to have faith in God. See, He said, lean not to thine own understanding. In fact, I have found that most of the time when God's people are in trouble, they're trying to figure things out instead of faith things out. And I want to bring you back to what God is trying to show you right here this morning. Child of God, I want you to trust God. 
I want you to have faith in God this morning that He's going to resolve your situation. That he's going to help you in the midst of your, your attack from the enemy. And, and just like He was willing to step in and give Israel uh, uh, you know, the divine instructions they needed in their day, I believe God will give you the divine instructions that you need. Listen, if you will, in Proverbs chapter 8. Turn to Proverbs chapter 8 and listen to this. Proverbs chapter 8, in verse number 12, it says this, I, wisdom, dwell with prudence, and find out knowledge of witty inventions. Now, the word witty inventions is very, very important here because the, the, the greater understanding of the word invention here in the original language is strategy. What I want you to understand is, it's just like God was giving witty strategy on how to deal with the enemy. God wants to give you witty strategy. He wants to give you divine strategy on how to defeat the enemy. And it's important for you and I to get a hold of this, that, that this is part of wisdom. And God said, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God. God will give you wisdom on how to deal with your situation. And that, once again, brings us back to the twofold thing that I'm pointing you to. First of all, is the Word of God, but also to have confidence in the man of God. That you've got to get to this place of where that you don't feel like you're isolated and nobody cares about you. Ladies and gentlemen, as a pastor, that is one of the great things about the office of a pastor, is God has placed a love in my heart for His people. Elisha loved God's people. And he and he wanted to be uh, he wanted to be a blessing to God's people in his day. Well, it hasn't changed for me. I feel that same way. I have that great sense of of, of uh, it's like protectiveness that's in me. I want to help God's people, and I want to I want to be in your corner. I don't want you to ever feel like you're going through this world alone. And I pray this morning that you'll get this in your heart, that just like God used the man of God, Elijah, in his day, I believe that God is using me today to pass on witty strategy, to give people the wisdom from God's Word that they need, to be, be able to ward off the attack of the enemy. So if the enemy is, has come, and he is invading into your land, I pray this morning that you wouldn't, you wouldn't be one of those people who say, well, I'm not going to tell nobody about this. And, I, and, and, and that includes the pastor. Well, I, you're welcome to do however you want to do about your situation. I, I assure you of that because I'm, I, I'm not going to be one of those people who just come over and nose into your business. But I will tell you this, I, I want you to know that there's an open door policy to my life. If you, want, if you want to visit with me, give me a call and we'll sit down and we'll visit, okay? And I think it's in, encouraging to know that God used Elijah in his day, and I believe he's still using men of God today to help one another. Somebody say amen. All right, let's move on if we will. Let's go back, if you will, in, in verse number 15 through 17 of in, in 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 15. And when in the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, a host encompassed the city both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? And he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And Elijah prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. Boy, I love this. Amen. I love this because this is, this is revelation knowledge right here that they'd be far more for us than be against us. Amen. It truly is. You, need to really, you really need to let your eyes be open to the wonderful truth this morning. They'd be far more for you than be against you. Ladies and gentlemen, God be for you. Who can be against you? Amen. I really want you to get a hold of, of what I believe is such a, a pronounced uh, truth here this morning that we find here the servant of Elijah, he goes out and suddenly he looks around and he sees all these Syrians. They're at Dothan. And he sees all these Syrians around him. And man, he, oh my, my. And, and fear come into his heart. And he turns to the man of God, Elijah, and he said, Alas, Master, what shall we do? And Elijah speaks to him. And he tells him, he said, there'd be far more for us than be against us. But then he does something that I think is very powerful, very wonderful, that needs to happen. He began to pray and he said, Lord... I pray that you open the servant's eyes, that you open this young man's eyes that he can see. And suddenly his eyes were open, and he saw the horsemen and the chariots of God all around about. 
Ladies and gentlemen, to me, this is vitally important because the second thing the Lord loves to do, the Lord loves to honor uh, the, 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 the prayer of intercession. This, this was a prayer of intercession. You see, this young man, he come to the man of God with fear in his heart. Because he didn't see, at first, he didn't see the horsemen in the chariots of God round about the city. He didn't see them surrounding the Syrian army. Elijah could see, and he believed that they were there. But then Elijah, he, he recognized that here's a young man that's in trouble. Like maybe there's somebody here this morning that's in trouble. There's fear. There's fear in his heart. Ladies and gentlemen, I assure you, fear is a mighty adversary to genuine faith. Amen. You got you to recognize that this is, this, is a, this is a mighty spiritual darkness called the spirit of fear. And anyway, I love this because the man of God, and once again, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to direct your attention to the man of God. In this instance, he is giving this young man the, the help that he needs by having a prayer of intercession. I want you to think about this because I think it's incumbent upon everyone to get to a place to where, like this young man, you become a little bit transparent. You gotta let you gotta let the man of God know where you're at and what you're going through. Amen. You see, this young man could have he could have just ducked his head and went in the house and, and hid. But instead he came to the man of God and became very transparent and he opened up his, his comment to the man of God because of this fear. And he said, Alas, Master, what shall we do? And I think the the, the thing that Elijah does, he he he, can, he calms him down with, first of all, of saying, there'd be far more force than be against us. And that's, that's a good place to start. But I love this because the man of God took it to the next level and he had a prayer of intercession. He prayed for the young man, Lord, I want you to open up his eyes. Amen. You see, I, I want you to think about this this morning. Who in your life do you know that would benefit from your interceding in prayer for him? Who do you know this morning that would benefit you if you, if you come to these altars here in a few minutes and, and you said, you know what, they're under attack. They're fearful. And I want to encourage you to get to that place to where that you incorporate your faith uh, and, and you bring it before God in such a way that you understand that the Lord loves to honor a prayer of intercession. Amen. God said in the Word, He said He sought for a man to stand in the hedge and make up a gap. There are some of you this morning that, that you, need to, you need to pray for somebody that you love, somebody that you know, and you need to let this prayer of intercession really come al alive in your heart. Jeremiah 33.3 3 says this, The Lord said, Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Some of you this morning that are, that are being attacked, I hope that you'll come to a place that you'll You'll, you'll, you'll be transparent and you'll, you'll recognize the importance of coming and, and getting with a pastor, getting with a man of God. You say, Brother David, I, I, I've got something here I, I want you to help me with. I want you to pray with me about. I'd like for you to hold your spot here. I'll bring you right back here. Turn to Matthew. Would you turn over to Matthew right quick? I want you to see the scripture verse here. And just let the Lord uh, speak to your heart the importance of what is being said here because this is such a powerful, powerful, and wonderful truth in the Word of God. And I love this because it brings me a great deal of joy and satisfaction whenever people come to me and they say, Brother David, will you pray with me about this? Giving me the opportunity to pray a prayer of intercession. Listen to what the Word of God says here because I believe it's vitally important that you have confidence in the man of God that stands before you. That, I, that, that it is important for you as, a, as an individual, as a parishioner that comes to this church, that you believe that as a man of God, you can trust me to keep whatever you share with me in confidence. Because I'll tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that's where a lot of people get, if you will, they shoot themselves in the foot. Somebody comes and shares something with them. And before they get home, they find out that three or four friends of theirs already found out what you told them. Amen. But I want you to get to this place that you understand. This young man that we're talking about in the book of, of Second Kings here, he is being very transparent about his situation. He was fearful. Alas, Master, what shall we do? I mean, he is scared out of his wits. 
Or some of you need to really let the word of the Lord come alive to you this morning. In Matthew chapter 18 and verse number 19, I point this out to you. And, I, and it says, Again I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. You know, the Lord, I, I believe He knew that, that it might be difficult for, for people to find a lot of people that would really have faith agreement with them. But I assure you, ladies and gentlemen, that's what I've been called upon many times to be a party to, is to be in agreement with people. I've seen God throughout my years of ministry now bless so many people in so many variety of different ways. It's just been incredible. But you see, I would have never got to pray that prayer of intercession uh, with that individual had they not become transparent with me and said, Brother David, would you pray with me? My marriage is in trouble. We're in financial hardship. We've got an illness. We've got a child that's grown rebellious, won't listen to us. There's all kinds of reasons why we need to become transparent and be able to honor God's Word in the Gospel of Matthew here. There are, there are some of you here this morning that would benefit tremendously if you would just let this wonderful truth come alive to you. Just like God used the man of God, Elijah, in his day, once again, I believe He uses men just like myself to stand in the gap with you today. It's important for you to get this into your heart that God wants to use those that are in the anointed offices. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe probably the hardest office to walk in would have been the office of the prophet. Okay? Because thus saith the Lord is very, very important. But I also know that the fivefold ministry, the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher, I believe it's still relevant for the church today. And it's important for you to understand that as the pastor of a church, that I have an opportunity to come along beside you and pray for you a prayer of intercessory prayer. That it would be a prayer of faith. Because as Elijah stood in his day, ladies and gentlemen, can I tell you that we're talking 3,000 years ago. This is when this is occurring. Right around 3,000 years ago, this is when this, this biblical account actually happened. The man of God would pray and the Lord would answer his prayer. I believe God still answers prayers, ladies and gentlemen. God heard Elisha's intercession of prayer, that prayer of intercession there, and he immediately opened the young man's eyes and he saw. He saw the horsemen and the chariots of God all around him. I just want you to understand once again the importance of you getting to this place that you have someone that you can come to, you can talk to, and you can, you can share whatever it is with me that you may need to. And I'll just say this in, in regard to this as well. Ladies and gentlemen, whenever we're talking about the prayer of agreement, I believe that any mature Christian can share a prayer of intercession for you. Amen. That you've got to get to this place that you, you don't try to go through this life without you having Christian uh, friends or family members that you can, you can discuss personal things with and you can pray with. And I just want you to understand that's one of the things that God shows us here in the Word. If any two of you will agree. It's up to you to come to that place of realizing God needs you to activate your faith. He needs you to become transparent. I find it very sad to me that so many times God's people can be going through a, a difficult time and they'll never pick up the phone and call Brother David. They'll never call another Christian in the household of God. I think that's unfortunate. I hope and pray that this morning that you'll get the, the, the insight to what God is trying to show us from the Word of God here this morning. There's a lot of people that will hear this message over the, over the YouTube sermon that goes out and everything. And I want them to know wherever they're at, if they call me, I'll talk with them and I'll pray with them right over the phone, wherever they're at. And I want you to know this is important for us to get a hold of this wonderful truth. God is looking for the men of God of our day to step up to the plate and be the men of God that He needs them to be. To be able to come along beside God's people and pray with them that they can have a blessing from God take place in their life. I found it very shocking on, on, on one occasion. It's the only time it ever happened, but I found it very shocking. A pastor stood in his pulpit and he told the people that was listening to him, and I happened to be in that congregation that day, and he said, don't you call me if you come up and you got a problem. You call one of my associates. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll leave this pulpit before I ever do you that way. Amen. 
I want you to know that as a pastor, I take my, I take my position very, uh, very sincerely, very honestly into my heart. I can, tr- I can, tr- I consider it a tremendous honor to be in this position. I consider it uh, a responsibility to be able to be there for God's people and pray for you and to help you and encourage you in your times of need. So I just want to t- tell you once again that I believe in the power of agreement. An intercessory prayer. And just like Elijah did in his day and he prayed for this young man, he saw the dilemma he was going through and he prayed for him and, and he said, Lord, open up this young man's eyes and you see the immediate result? God honored the prayer of intercession. Thirdly, and I'll close with this in verse 20, 21. I want you to get this. And the king of Israel said unto Elijah when he saw them, My father, shall I smite them? Shall I smite them? And he answered, Thou shalt not smite them. Wouldest thou smite those whom thou hast taken captive with thy sword and with thy bow? Set bread and water before them, that they may eat and drink and go to their master. And he prepared great provision for them. And when they had eaten and drunk, he sent them away, and they went to their master. So the hands of Syria came no more into the land of Israel. I found this to be very interesting as well. Because I believe the third thing that the Lord loves, the Lord loves to provide divine inspiration. When the king of Israel was provided the host of Syria that that Elijah had had called upon the Lord to smite the Syrian army with blindness and then he had led them all the way back down into Samaria here from Dothan. He led them back into Samaria and, and, and now... Uh, he opened, praise the Lord, open up their eyes. Well, they open up their eyes and they realize, oh no, we're right in the midst, we're right in the midst of the, the army of Israel here in Samaria. And of course, uh, here we find the immediate reaction of the king of Israel is, uh, shall I smite them? Shall I smite them? There's some of you feel like that uh, there's some people that's been doing you wrong. There's some people that's really been hammering you been attacking you. And you've been wanting to take them out behind the woodshed and take a little bit of their honor on. And I think it's unfortunate many times as Christians we fail in this area right here whenever our buttons are being pushed. We do the same thing Israel's wanting to do here. King of Israel. He's wanting to smite them. He's wanting to strike them down. I want you to think about who it is that has really been creating some problems for you. I want you to think about the people that, that, that this is really going to be relevant to you about this morning because I'm talking about divine inspiration. Elijah, he begins to correct the king of Israel. And he's showing him a new, new approach to handling this arch enemy called the Syrian army. He said, I want you to set out provisions for them. I want you to give them food and drink and then to send them on their way. What? You want me to do what? Really? This is a Christian principle that has got to be readopted. Unfortunately, it's, it's, this is an area where that many times as Christians we drop the ball right here. When people get ugly with us, when people get mean with us, we can revert back to the flesh, unfortunately, very quickly. And that's what this king of Israel was trying to do. He was just trying to let his flesh dictate how I'm going to handle this situation. But Elijah is showing him a better way. I want to show you a better way. Turn in your Bibles, if you will. I want you to turn to the Gospel of Luke right quick. The Gospel of Luke, and we're going to turn to the ninth chapter. I'd like for you to read in the Gospel of Luke, the ninth chapter, and... uh, Let's look at verse 51, if you would, please. And it came to pass when the time was come that he should be received up, he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem and sent messengers before his face. And they went and entered into a village of the Samaritans to make uh, ready for them, make ready for him. And they did not receive him because his face was as though he would go to Jerusalem. And when his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, wilt thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them, even as Elias did? But he turned and rebuked them and said, You know not what manner of spirit you are of. 
For the Son of Man has not come to destroy men's life, but to save them. And they went to another village. It's an eye-opening moment for the servants of Jesus. These disciples upon, here we are back in the land of Samaria. This is approximately about a thousand years from the time that we were just reading about. It's about a thousand years now forward to the days of Jesus. And we know there's another biblical account in reference to the predecessor, the, the man that was before Elisha was called Elijah. And Elijah on, this, on one occasion, he had called down fire from heaven and consumed uh, some men. And we, we find here that here Jesus is, he's about to head up to Jerusalem. And his disciples are with him. And they're making ready for him, trying to make ready for him there in Samaria. And the people didn't want to have nothing to do with him. And so the disciples, they get all bent out of shape. And they say, Lord, would you have us to call down fire as Elijah did and consume them? And this is where Jesus really put the road, or the rubber to the road in Christianity in my mind. He said, you know not what manner of spirit you're of. I really want you to consider that this morning. Those people that have been, if you will, like a thorn in your flesh. They've been needling you, making your life miserable, saying hurtful things, doing hurtful things to you. And you've been just walking around just like a ticking time bomb. You have the mindset of these disciples here in the Gospel of Luke. You have the mindset of of the King of Israel. Shall I smite them? Shall I smite them? I'd like for you to consider once again, you know not what manner of spirit you are of. Elijah gave the King of Israel divine inspiration. This is how I want you to handle this situation. I want you to get to this place, ladies and gentlemen, that that we we stop reverting back so quickly to anger. We We stop reverting back to the measures of the flesh on how I'm going to resolve this difficulty. This person is being mean to me. They're being ugly to me. I want you to get to this place where in your heart you say, I'm going to be Christ like. I recognize the importance of being Christ like. I want you to get to this place to where that forgiveness is the first thing that you think of when somebody's being ugly to you. I want you to get rid of the bitterness and the anger this morning by coming to God and saying, God, I am sorry that I have been handling this entirely wrong. I have been trying to deal with this in the flesh and I find out that I did not know what manner of spirit that I am of. I am of the Spirit of God. Somebody say amen. Amen. I find this to be interesting, if you will, as well. Matthew chapter 5. Listen to what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5 this morning. In verse number 9, He said, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. I need you to be a peacemaker. I need you to get to this place in your life in dealing with the individual that has come against you very much like the the host of Syria has come against Israel, and, and they are receiving divine inspiration from the man of God. The man of God is giving out divine inspiration. This is how God wants you to handle this. It's my job as a minister to point you to the holy writ, and you be able to see with your own heart, your own eyes, Understand it in your heart. This is how the Lord would have me to handle this. Not as the disciples initially thought, Lord, shall we call down fire out of heaven? Jesus said, You know not what manner of spirit you are of. Today is the day you walk out those doors, friends. Different than what you walked in if you've been battling with somebody at work. You've been battling somebody in your home. I don't know where it's at that you're being confronted by people that have been ugly to you. They've said hurtful things to you. But I beseech you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ this morning that you determine in your heart this day, this day, I will honor the inspiration, the divine inspiration I'm receiving from the man of God. Because He has shown me from God's own Word That blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. 
The way you become a peacemaker is you begin to forgive. You get to this place that you say, I know what I'm supposed to do. I am supposed to forgive this person. Turn in your Bible right there in Matthew while you're there. Will you please do this with me right quick? Matthew chapter 5 and verse 43. Matthew 5, 43. You have heard that it has been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, Love your enemy. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Amen. Today is the day, friends, that we do not leave this house with aught and bitterness and unforgiveness in our heart. Today is the day that we come to these altars and we, as God's people, we say, I choose to be Christ-like. I will pray for those that have been persecuting me in honor of God's holy word. Amen. That's how we change, ladies and gentlemen. Not by just hearing, but responding. Amen. That we have a spiritual response to what the word of the Lord teaches us. Did you notice what the king of Israel did upon hearing the divine inspiration? He did exactly what the man of God told him to do. He made a great provision for the host of Syria, set out the food and the drink, and sent them on their way. He blessed them. Amen. Does that not line up with what you've just read here in the Word of God? To love your enemies, to bless those, to pray for them. That's how you're going to win the battle that you're in. That's whenever things begin to turn in the right direction. For your favor. I don't know about you, but I like, I like getting rid of conflict. I want you to be a peacemaker. God's Word instructs us to be peacemakers. For in so being and so doing, God says you're blessed. Amen. If you're here this morning, and God puts it in your heart to come and pray for somebody that has been a thorn in your flesh, They've said hurtful things. They've done hurtful things to you. I want you to come pray for them this morning. But let me ask you this. Have you been handling the firefight according to the dictates of your flesh? Is that how you've been going along through life here lately? Maybe today is not only a day that you pray for them, but you pray for yourself. Did you say, God help me to walk in your love? Help me to do those things, God, that Your Holy Word shows me. Today can be a life-changing experience. If you're here this morning, and you need God to help you with anger and bitterness, I hope that when the Holy Spirit ministers to you right now, that you'll get up and you'll come to these altars. You say, God, I've been handling this deal all wrong. Today is the day that I choose to forgive. Today is the day that I choose to bless. Today is the day that I choose to love. Today is the day that I choose to pray for those that have been persecuting me. Please stand with me. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you this morning for everyone that's here. And as we come to this part of our service that we call the invitation, Father, I pray that you have used me in such a way this morning that it has been inspirational. Lord, we need to be broken and poured out before you this morning. Lord, we want this 2016 year to be a great year for us. We want our relationships to be healed. Lord, we're time. it's time for peace. Lord, you said, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Lord, I believe this morning that you have shown us from the Word of God some wonderful biblical truths. Lord, just as it was in the days of Elijah, the enemy arrived on the scene. And Lord, you gave divine instruction. Lord, you gave the man of God that unction to function in a prayer of intercession whenever the young man confessed alas master what shall we do Lord if there's someone here this morning that's had their back against the wall and they need to be someone standing in agreement with them Lord I'll be here at the front to do that very thing to pray a prayer of intercession Lord if there's somebody here this morning that knows in her heart that we needed this divine inspiration to handle a personal conflict differently than what we've been doing we're going to honor you this morning, Lord, and come say a prayer. We're going to pray not only for ourselves, but those that we've been in conflict with. I pray for the Holy Spirit to have His way now in this service. 
In Jesus' name, amen. Right now, altars are open, friend. Will you take a step of faith right now? Let the Lord hear from you. Would you come?